Welcome back, Seth Bling here. I'm back on the Minecraft server and I have been real busy. So uh, this is actually the first time opening this world or opening a server on the 13w41b snapshot, basically the, the 1.7 snapshot. And it'll probably air a couple days after actually filming, but I thought I wanted to capture everything as I explore it on the 1.7 snapshot. Uh, so if I open my inventory, it just announces to the chat. <laughs> yeah, I have to get all the achievements again, so that's going to be fun, punching wood and everything. Uh, but I've been very, very busy. I've done a lot of improvements on my base. I've collected a lot of resources. Where to even start? Um, okay, so over here uh, we have my little farm. I got a little farm for all the animals. Uh, this is kind of cool. So I've got all the sheep, every color is sheep, and I've tried to sort them by color as best I could. <laughs> um, I think I did okay. And I've got pigs over here, cows over here, obviously. Now the cool thing that I really like about this, it's using uh, the cobblestone walls. So I can jump right in, but I can also jump out using the carpet. And so I really love that I can just walk in and, wa and jump out. And um, I mean, I, I, I know other people have done this and, and whatever. So I'm not, it's not like I invented this or anything, but I just think it's really, really cool. Uh, yeah, all the sheep, I have four sheep per pen. It's pretty easy to just go ahead and, you know, um, shear all the sheep, grab the stuff, hop back out, move over to the next one, and I can move on to the next, um, the next set, next cell, and it's very, it's very quick to do all that. Breeding the animals is really easy because I can stand above them and, you know, look down and see which ones haven't been bred or whatever. So this is all very convenient, and uh, yeah, so it took, took me a little while. Now, something cool that I did here is, um, so all the the grass uh, is underneath, well, the sheep are, are staying on top of grass because, you know, they need to eat grass in order to regrow their coat. Obviously, I don't have grass over here for the pigs because I don't need it, and I thought it'd be nicer if they didn't have grass under them. Um, but it does take some time for the grass to regrow, and grass regrows better if it's got other grass around it. So I've actually... Uh, I've put other um, other grass underneath the walkway here so that you can't see it, but it is there and it'll replenish, replenish the grass source when uh, when that gets eaten by the sheep. So that's kind of cool. I think four sheep per pen is nice because each one occupies a block, so they each stand on top of a grass block and eat that. And it seems to actually grow back very quickly. I mean, you can see I've already got two cyan, one blue. Uh, it is It is pretty quick to grow back. So it's pretty good. It's not too much wool out of it, but it's good enough for me. I just come by every once in a while and shear it. Uh, and I've got the cows, pigs, whatever. I've been breeding them a lot so that I could get leather. What else do we got? We've got the enchanting table over here. You notice I have 46 levels, and that is because Gude has built an Enderman farm, which is really convenient in the end. And it's really, really fast to get levels now. Uh, it takes like two minutes to get to level 30 or something. It's very, very quick. I've been doing a lot of enchanting. <laughs> so we've got um, actually my fourth pick that I ever enchanted on this server got Silk Touch. So I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Con congrats to Zisto for for achieving that achievement, taking inventory. I love that it announces all the, <laughs> all the achievements. It's really funny. Uh, so I've got three Silk Touch. I... I don't even, I was just trying to get a normal axe, and I got Silk Touch, and then I was like, well, I still want a normal with the axe, so I enchanted another one, and I got another Silk Touch one, so <laughs> finally I got the, you know, good axe for, uh, for actually chopping down stuff, but I got a lot of other enchanted stuff, I tried enchanting a bunch of books, really I got kind of a lot of crappy stuff, I did get, I get, like, Feather Falling, and I guess Power 4 is okay, but most of this stuff I'll probably never use, but it's really easy to, <laughs> like I said, I spent like a half hour getting all these books enchanted. It's very quick, and I've got more books set aside. So that's that's really cool. Thank I want to really thank you for putting that together. Um, you can see I've got everything, you know, all sorted. Let's see, I can uh, I uh, set aside space for my wool, so I have all, space for all the different wools. Uh, I've been mining a lot. I've got my branch mines down here, and ooh, that scares me every time I do that. <laughs> Uh, and I've, I've been doing a lot of branch mining, so you can see all these go on for a long time. Uh, I intentionally didn't light up the end of this hallway because I discovered that there's a slime chunk here. 
and so every once in a while I come down here and there's big slime. <laughs> so uh, with a looting sword you can actually get a lot of slime uh, slime balls out of that. So I've got like a stack or two of slime balls out of that. That's pretty good. And I've started actually mining over this way as well. So uh, I've been doing a fair amount of branch mining. I've got my fortune pick. Uh, oops. I haven't really been doing any caving except for if I encounter a cave along the branch mines. Uh, part, part of that's just because of UHC mode. I I don't really want to put myself at risk of dying so far. I don't have any deaths, and that's pretty cool. Uh, and I just think branch mining is actually more efficient. You find stuff faster. So let's see. Here's my chest with kind of all the supplies that I get from mining. I also have been getting a lot of redstone, so I've I've got more than nine full stacks of redstone block. Should be enough to last me quite a while. You can see I've got quite a few diamonds here. I'm actually going to grab a bunch of them uh, because I want to head over to the dock shop and purchase some uh, some glowstone because I don't really like having these torches all over all the wood. Uh, I like glowstone a lot because, as opposed to this, well, I guess pumpkins would be okay, but I don't really like having pumpkins in my base. Uh, because you can't accidentally punch out glowstone, really, uh, if, you have, if you're like swinging a sword or something. So, uh, so I like glowstone. I'm going to try and put glowstone and not use any torches on top of wood or stone if I can. Uh, okay, over here I've got a bridge. So, like I said, I have that silk touch pick now, and that's really cool. Uh, so basically, I chose this spot for my base because it is right next to uh, a taiga biome. And I don't know if you noticed in the last episode, but there was a big taiga biome over here. <laughs> Again, I did my thing. I kind of deforested it. I got rid of all the trees, and I actually lit up the area with torches so well that basically snow can't spawn here. There's one spot over there that has snow in it. <laughs> Let me take care of that real quick. Be gone. Yeah, so... You can see this is all taiga. If I press F3, it's all taiga. Uh, so I want to do a couple things here, and I will be doing that probably over the next couple episodes. Uh, I want to make an ice tray so that I have a nice quick way to get ice and have that replenish. I'm not sure exactly what design I'll, I'll do. That's probably not in this episode. I do also want to make a snow machine where I can, um, where I can basically have a snowman generating snow for me. And, and snowmen only work in snowy biomes, so taiga biome is for that, and uh, and I want to have hoppers automatically collected and everything. I planted a few reeds and cacti over here just because I didn't have any sort of farm. I'm going to make a real farm for these later, along with you know pumpkins and melons and everything. But for now, this is what I've got. That's pretty much what I've done to my base. Uh, I did wall off the, the taiga biome with, with the, uh, the, the cobblestone walls, as you can see over there, so... Uh, there's that as well. Um, I Okay, so I'm going to take these diamonds. I'm going to head over to the dock shop. I know he has glowstone for sale. And uh, basically, he's got a witch farm that uh, we saw in my server tour. And so he has pretty easy access to glowstone. So he's selling it for relatively cheap. It's two diamonds per stack of glowstone. I find that I'm actually able to get quite a few diamonds by branch mining. So, oh, yeah. That's nice. That's really loud, though. <laughs> so in the 1.7 snapshot, you can have these big, giant portals. Oh, I'm going to have to update my portal. This is cool. So I can actually hop in any of these portals now. This is how it was designed. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> oh, I didn't expect to see that. I almost forgot that I was in 1.7 now. So yeah, that's cool. We're going to be seeing a lot of different sized portals around. Here's Zisto. I don't know if he's doing anything right now. <laughs> Maybe he's AFK. I don't even know. Looks like he's pointing this way. I can't even tell. <laughs> yeah, I guess his face is this way, but his arms that way. Yikes. Some exorcist crap right there. Wow. Uh, I know he, oh, before he was, um, he was building these lamp designs. And these are going to go around spawn, I think. Uh, he was asking people to come by and take a look, so I, uh, I actually took a look earlier. I think number one and number five over here were my favorite, but I don't know. Uh, I'm not really, like I've said many times, oh, Hopper? Wow, that's fancy. Uh, I'm not really, I don't have that big of an eye for aesthetics, so, um, but I like one and five the most, personally. Sunset. 
so we'll have those lamps around. Uh, I don't know which one everyone's going to choose. Uh, he's asked for feedback from everyone. Oh, that's cool. We got all the flowers around here, too. I guess you can use bone meal to spawn those flowers. That's actually going to be a really nice way to get lots of dyes. Um, yeah, that, but that's pretty, having all those around spawn. I like that. <laughs> all right, so here's the dock shop. This is Doc M 77s shop. And special deal, 64 glow, so it equals two diamonds. So this is cool. Uh, we've got uh, six stacks, so that'd be 12 diamonds if I grab all of them. I think I'm gonna do that. So let's see. There's a payment thing right here. So 12 diamonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's see. Maybe I can write something with this. Hi. Uh, is that an exclamation point? Uh, I can't really do an exclamation point out of this, can I? Um, I don't know. Ah, uh, man. All right. Well, anyway, so... <laughs> All right, so that's 12 diamonds. Glowstone. I want to note, in my server tour, I uh, I grabbed some supplies out of the chest from Doc M's base. Um, I want to just... A lot of people were saying, Oh, you, why'd you take stuff from him without permission? I want to mention, he actually did give me permission to take stuff from the witch farm before I went over there. I didn't show it in the video or anything, but... Um, yeah, he gave me permission. I even checked with him afterwards, showed him the chest I took stuff from. He said it was totally cool. So don't no need to worry. He's totally cool with uh, with what I took and everything. Head back to my base. There is one thing I want to talk about on the way to my base while I'm traveling, and that's view bobbing. A lot of people have been commenting about view bobbing. Uh, view bobbing is, uh, well, you'll notice as I'm walking along, it looks kind of like I'm gliding rather than, you know, my arm moving back and forth and stuff. And people find that really annoying that I don't have view bobbing on. And I will tell you, <laughs> I find view bobbing annoying, personally. I find it annoying to have that bobbing back and forth. Uh, other first person shooters don't really have that. And so I'm used to not having that when I'm in first person mode. And I think, I think having view bobbing on makes it harder to see motion in the distance. Looks like Zisto's going up. I see his name tag. It, it's hard, it makes it harder to see motion in the distance. Like, I'm not sure I would have seen his name tag if I had view bombing on and I was moving around. Um, just because everything is moving. So, um, I prefer that. It's, it's just a per personal preference thing. So, uh, <laughs> that's my reasoning, though. Let's see, is this... Okay, that still goes through. So, I made a little tunnel connecting my base over to the end. Uh, but I'm not going to go there right now. Um, so, I think that's... I think that's most of what I've done uh, for my base. Uh, I want to I wanna kind of ask your opinion on on the bridge here. <laughs> this is the first time I've tried to make any sort of arched bridge or anything. First attempt. Why is it dark over here? I wonder. It's weird. Um, what do you guys think of this? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I like it actually. I think it's, I think it's pretty, pretty decent for, for me at least. <laughs> I, I really don't I don't know. I haven't uh, I haven't put a lot of thought into aesthetics. I, I'm like I always say, it's just never been one of my primary concerns. But I thought if I was going to have a bridge, I should have it look you know halfway decent. So let me know what you think about that, or if there's any improvements you think I should make, or whatever. But it seems to work good. So um, yeah, I'll be back with the next thing. All right. So I was actually just reading the comments on my previous video where I showed off the wheat and bone meal farm. And Brian MCN actually pointed out that I've done this in a kind of a dumb way. I totally forgot, basically, that dispensers can use bone meal and crops. And that would make this whole farm a lot more efficient if I'd used that. Uh, <laughs> it's basically one of the side effects of playing survival or playing creative and not survival for a long time. So. Uh, he also pointed out that Etho has a version that does use bone meal and is actually very compact, very efficient. So I built that here with a couple of small modifications. So basically the idea is you step on the pressure plate here and that gets a little clock going. And there's these dispensers that have bone meal in them. And uh, the dispensers don't actually use up bone meal if, if they're not pointing at anything that they can grow. So while I'm standing here, it's not using up any bone meal. If I go ahead and start trying to plant the crops, though, you can see I start getting the wheat out of that. And it's quite a bit faster than my previous version. It doesn't waste any bone meal. <laughs> In short, it's just way better. You get all the seeds back and everything. Um, it works 
In order to switch between crop types, you don't even have to trade anything out of the dispensers. You can just, you know, oh, whoops, not steak. <laughs> Try to plant steak. Uh, you can just switch which item you're planting, and that's it. Uh, I made a couple small modifications to Ethos design, though. Uh, I think I think his version was designed for single player, and probably for an older version of the game. It was about six months ago that he released it. So, some of the small modifications I made were I lengthened the time of the clock and the delay uh, on which the dispensers get triggered, because with the lag of multiplayer servers, I just wasn't having, a, having enough time to actually plant the crop before the, the bone meal got, or basically, yeah, before the bone meal got dispensed. So I increased that. The other thing is, I put this button here. And what this does is it prevents me from planting the crops. I'm right clicking right now. It's not doing anything. It prevents me from planting the crops when it's up up top. So that um, basically, if I happen to catch the tilled dirt at the top of its cycle, I wouldn't accidentally plant something, and then that thing would actually stick around for a second or so after the piston retracts because it's because of server lag, basically, and it it kind of blocks your placement of things down below. So the button's actually critical for multiplayer to make this work. But, um, but otherwise, very awesome design by Etho. I've linked it in the video description. Go check it out. It's a really, really nice farm, and it's very practical and useful. So nice nice for breeding all these animals. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to head over to the end, and I want to make a little bit of an improvement to the landing platform there. Uh, basically, there is water on the landing platform, and every time you teleport in to the end, it deletes the water and the water rushes back in, but it's kind of annoying to walk around when the water is there because, well, you know, <laughs> uh, it's water. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it pushes you and sit. so we'll see. When I get in the end, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so we have the water here. You'll see it's rushing out because as soon as I teleport it into the end, it... Um, uh, everything that was on top of the spawning platform here got deleted, but the water source is actually outside of that. It's way over here. Um, but this could be a little bit better, I think. So I'm going to try and make it a little bit better. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some redstone. <laughs> go figure. Uh, Seth Lane doing redstone. Who would have thought? Okay, so basically the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have the landing platform clear out, and I'm going to have the water not fill right back in. I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of this now. I don't need it. I've got two buckets of water in my inventory. Three, actually. Um, and I'm going to have dispensers basically create a new water source every time you leave the platform here. So uh, I'm going to place the two dispensers here, and I'm going to have them dispense water source blocks and then retract it up again. And that'll create a new water source block right here, and that will keep the platform pretty much clear. Um, but that'll get deleted every time. Anyway, you'll, you'll see in a moment what I mean. Uh, so, okay, so I've got these two guys, and then the, the idea is I'm going to have pressure plates here and here, because those are the only two ways of leaving the spawning platform. And those are going to trigger these dispensers twice. And that's all there is to it. Um, now, in order to do this, I'm going to have to do some maneuvering. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't like the idea of the redstone being visible. Whoops. So, let's see. So, I, I, I basically want to... Um, let's see. So, this will trigger that. And then, over here, uh, I actually... there's I've got nothing to place it on. So, I'm going to use the water trick. And, <laughs> uh, and hope that I don't um, fall into the void basically. Uh, I'm going to place that and yeah, use that to go ahead and give myself something to place water with. Okay, so that should be good. Hopefully I don't die here. Pick that water back up um, and then I can put the redstone down and I can actually start using this. So this is good. So I got to be real careful here though. I actually have all my like good armor on and everything. Really hope I don't die. Uh, fall into the void. I'm like gripping my shift key really tightly. So I'm going to go ahead and create a little monostable circuit. First thing I'm going to actually do is link up the two pieces of redstone with um, a chain over here. So, okay, we should be good. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to need to go right past this. I think I should be good here. 
can see that water falling off in the distance. Bye, water. Okay, there we go. And where's that? Did I go the wrong way? No, the redstone should be... Oh, it's right over here, I think. Okay, so, yeah. So hook up the redstone so so that both of the... Um, both of the pressure plates trigger the same redstone circuit. And then I'm going to make a little monostable circuit out of some... Uh, some repeaters and torches, and that's going to trigger both of these twice. Let's see. So, let's go ahead and I need to elevate the redstone signal a little bit. And I think this is as good a spot as any for that mono stable. Um, okay, so this is my favorite uh, one wide mono stable circuit design that I'm going to be building here. And you probably see it a lot if you watch me build redstone much. <laughs> but here we go. So, yep. And then I need a repeater down here. I've never built it in survival, actually, I don't think. Or not recently. This will have a four tick delay. You can do either three or four on that. And then a uh, torch here. Cover that up with a cobblestone. And then that there. Okay. So now... I'm going to uh, not fall off still, <laughs> and we're going to, let's see, trigger all of this stuff off of that redstone torch, and then I'm going to also have a delayed signal over here, so I think a four tick delay should do it. Oh my god, I'm still terrified of falling off here. <laughs> all right, so let's see, I think I could just make a button here and actually test this out, and we should be able to hear everything clicking twice if I have done this correctly. So let's try it out. Yep, okay, so uh, those those repeaters go ahead and click twice. Um, all right, now I just have to get back in without falling still. Not falling. Okay, good work, Seth. <laughs> um, oh, now I have this ugly redstone contraption here. Hmm, maybe I should just block this off so no one sees that. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, where'd the... Did I not place the second dispenser? What happened to the second dispenser? Did I just cover it up? It's right here, isn't it? Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now when I go ahead and... Um, well, let's just make sure that both pressure plates work. Ooh, doesn't seem like this is working. It might be too far. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and break this block. Uh, might be too far too long of a distance. Uh, let's count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, it's too, just a little bit too far. So if I just put a little repeater there, that should fix it. Good thing. i got, got to always test this stuff. Uh, is there a way back up? No. I have to make my own way. Alright. So that works. That works. Great. Um, let's see, what do I need to replace? <laughs> what did I? What blocks did I just remove? Uh, it should be should be good there. Okay, so now I'm gonna put water in here. Actually, I didn't. Don't know why I put that in my hand. Water in here, and oh, you know what? Actually, oh, it's not quite enough to lay. Actually, yeah. That's a problem. Okay, so we got to go back out. I need enough delay that the two water sources can create a, a new water source. And apparently the delay that I gave it is not quite enough. So, let's... Obviously the answer is for me to jump in the end. <laughs> okay, this is great. I'm going to block off my path. There's going to be no maintenance on this. Alright, well that should hopefully work anyway. Still terrified. Okay, good. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. Yeah, okay, there we go. So now, we got a path. As soon as as soon as you leave the starting platform, we got a path back. So I'm going to head back and... Let's see, I guess I could actually only... Yeah, no, I want to have it here. Yeah, I want to have it as soon as you leave the starting platform, it, it picks the water back up. So, so that should be good. I'm going to head back to... Oh, I got an Enderman in my way. I didn't even know Enderman could get in here. 
Oh, there's like one spot where they can. All right, time to dive. Oh, okay, good enough. <laughs> so I'm gonna head back and I'll be right back once I'm uh, ready to go back into the end. All right, here we are back at the end portal. I'm just gonna go right through and platform is cleared, perfect. Uh, while we're in the end, I might as well show you the Ender Ender, the Ender Farm built by Goode. Let me make sure that... Hmm, should I cover this up? I think I should cover it up. Yeah. Uh, let me make sure that everything is good here. I don't want to leave it worse off than I found it, although I'm sure this is not a very permanent <laughs> skin for this part. But hopefully this redstone thing will stay around. All right, I'm going to go over to the Ender Ender and... Just make sure this works. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so that platform should be safe from Enderman. And cool. Yeah, so if Enderman teleport into the water, they're just going to get hurt and teleport away. So that should make that whole thing very safe. I want to show you the Ender Ender. This is this is built by Gud based on a design by, I believe, by the Zip Crowd. And I think it's really awesome. It's definitely changing the way that I play. <laughs> A lot. Uh, being able to have lots of enchantments and stuff is really, really nice. Uh, but I'll just show, show it to you really quick. It shouldn't take long to take a look. Hopefully the world loads in front of me. <laughs> so you can already see all the Endermen falling. Um, and they actually spawn really fast. So they spawn a little bit faster than I can even kill them, I think. So I'm basically just going to run back and forth. You can see I was already level 30-something, but I'm getting levels super fast. I mean... When you're once you're at level 30, it's usually pretty slow to get new levels, but <laughs> I'm getting experience faster than I can even pick it up right now. Uh, all this experience orbs flying in my face, that's because I can't pick them up fast enough. So this thing is really cool. I'm, uh, it's not quite done. Uh, I think Gude still has, uh, has yet to skin it, although who knows by the time they air this episode, maybe he'll have finished that. So uh, There's just uh, a little enchanting station over here. Donated by Doc M seventy seven, so thanks to him for that. So that's that's the Ender Ender, awesome stuff. Um, I, I haven't even looked at how it works. I, I think it's uh, I think it's based on tripwire, uh, basically a bunch of spawning pads up there, and there's tripwire, and when Enderman spawns, it pushes the entire row of pistons. I think that's how it works, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, uh, on to the last thing for this video. All right. Well, it looks like uh, we don't have as much time left in the video as I thought. So, uh, so I'm gonna wrap it up pretty soon here. Um, I'm gonna show you maybe what will be the only glimpse of myself branch mining on the server that you may ever see. Um, who knows? But I don't really plan on showing this, just so you can kind of see my branch mining technique. And while I do this, I want to plug a Minecraft related event uh, for Minecon for those those of you attending Minecon or who live in the Orlando area or maybe who. <laughs> We're just, just going, I don't know. Uh, but if you're going to be in Orlando for Minecon 2013, there is a Mindcrack meetup. And uh, and that is the Friday before Minecon, November 1st. And uh, basically, it's just for all the fans of Minecraft. And there's going to be a bunch of us there. It's going to be like 15 of us there. And it should be a lot of fun. It's at a bowling alley that we're renting out but the, the place has like an arcade and like pool tables and all this fancy stuff it's, it's really nice uh, I've put a link in the video description so you can go check that out uh, we are selling tickets to get in because it costs a lot to rent out the place and there's like uh, cab service or not cab uh, shuttle service to bring people to and from the event and there's all kinds of things so we are selling tickets to the event but if you would if you'd like to check it out there's a link in the video description and it'd be cool to see you guys there and you can come up say hi and all that stuff so uh yeah go check that out and i hope to see some of you there and thanks for watching